Hello guys, Lifehackster here and today we will check out the second gen essential outdoor camera from Arlo and this one is the 2K version. Arlo, just like with Ring, they really haven't released anything innovative lately and this second generation of their essential series has nothing new to offer except its pricing. Arlo realized they cannot compete with other brands on the pricing of their cameras. They still have it though, a $300 Ultra 2. Wait, it is on sale, 50 bucks off. But that's one expensive camera that records in highly compressed 4K resolution. And with Arlo, every time I see their ad in social media, just look at the comments. And they're bombarded with complaints. It seems like a lot of their users have issues with their cameras or their customer service. Now, if you are an Arlo user or used to be an Arlo user watching this, comment below what is your experience with them. Do you like them or not? And I'll give my thoughts on them later in the video, so keep on watching. All right, with their second gen Essential series, it comes in different models. Essential XL, which has a larger built-in battery. And the regular Essential, which both you can get in 2K or 1080p versions. They also have the Wired Essential Indoor, which is funny that they priced this at 40 bucks, which is the 1080p version. And it is cheaper than the older first gen Essential Indoor, which is also 1080p and currently on sale. Anyways, this 2K Essential camera records in 2K quality, 2560 by 1440 pixel resolution at 13 frames per second in my testing in daytime and goes down to 12 FPS at night. I noticed though that in shorter recordings, it is 20 FPS in daytime and 15 FPS at night. And I'm not sure the reason why. It has a 130 degree diagonal field of view. It has a motion activated spotlight at night. Not really that bright for color night vision recording. This is battery power that supposedly can last 4 months before needing to be recharged. And connects directly to your 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. Now, I don't think this connects to any of the Arlo's home base, which I think their first gen version of this can. Which means it only records to the cloud and you will need a subscription to access and view your recordings. And it starts at $4.99 per camera or $12.99 a month for unlimited Arlo cameras. This is an outdoor camera and it's weather resistant but Arlo didn't state any IP rating. Lastly, it works with your smart home devices. Inside the box, you will get the camera itself, camera lens, light sensor, mic, spotlights, and we have the PIR sensor here in the bottom and the speaker. The finish is matted unlike other Arlos that have tested. On top, we have the pair button. On the back, we have the quarter 20 screw mount. And on the bottom here, we have a rubber flap that covers the USB-C port for charging or hooking up the solar panel. What else are inside the box? We have the setup guide, a plastic mount, a short USB-C cable to charge the camera, mounting screws, plastic anchors, and the mounting plate. To set this up, open up the Arlo app, scroll down and add new device. Cameras, essential, second gen, which prompted me to upgrade to the new app. Press and hold the pairing button for 3 seconds. Choose and enter your Wi-Fi network and wait until it gets connected and update the firmware if needed. Time to install this, and with the mount included, this can only be installed in a vertical or wall install. Screw in the mounting plate, making sure the arrow is up, using the two included screws. Screw in the mount to the camera using a Phillips driver, and you can then attach it to the plate and pull down to lock it in place. You can adjust the position, right and left, up or down. Not a lot of range compared to a regular ball mount. To remove it, just push up on the mount and you can then remove it from the plate. Let's check the settings in the app. When you open up the app, you will have the new dashboard layout. Click on the play icon to get to live view, which as always with Arlo has some slowness in loading up. On top here are your security modes, which I'll show the settings later on. But in live view, you can start two-way talk, which is full duplex. You can record the live view or take a snapshot. And you can manually turn on the spotlight, which will turn the camera automatically in color mode. Now, it took me a while to get this, but if you pause the live view and tap anywhere and not the play icon, it will load up another screen, which has the recorded events. And now you have the gear icon for the camera settings. You will see you're automatically enrolled in a trial. You will see the battery life, power management, which I set to best video. And also have an option for low power mode, which it will just take snapshots instead of video. And I don't know who wants that though. 
video settings. You can only adjust the brightness. Night vision, you can choose black and white or record in full color. Light settings, adjust the brightness and you can even choose for it to flash instead of constant light. Audio settings, activity zones, I'm not sure why it seems the IR cut filter is not working on the screen, but you can have up to five rectangular zones. We have default mode settings, motion detection sensitivity, which I've set it to the highest, and I'll talk more about this later. You can adjust the recording length or just set it to record until the motion stops. And we have some siren settings here. Back to the main page and on the feed, this is another place you can view and download the recorded events from the camera. Now, if you click the person icon on top, locations and plans, this is where you're going to see your smart notifications, which I'll toggle also to on all other motion for now, which I'll also talk more about it later on. If you click on the routines in the bottom, this is where you can customize the modes or add automations. Like on the arm in a way, I set the camera to record when it detects motion and give me a notification. You can set it to automatically trigger the siren if you want to. Now time to do some testing. So this is the video and audio quality of the Arlo Essential 2K camera and this is the second generation and video clarity test at 10 feet. 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Running my test. So this is the video quality of the uh, Arlo Essential 2K camera at night. And this with the spotlight turned on, and this is what it looks like at 10 feet, 15, 20, 25, 30. So this is the video quality of the Arlo Essential 2K camera at night, and this with the spotlights off, and it has two infrared LEDs, and this is what it looks like at 10 feet, 15. 20, 25, 30. We're going to test the motion alert notification speed of the Arlo Essential 2K camera. And I'm on my 5G cellular network and it is 12.04. Let's check it out. There you go. You'll get that notification uh, motion first, then person detected. Then you'll get this snapshot and you can mute the notifications or activate the siren. But if you check on the notification uh, a little bit later, it will be a GIF preview like that. Cool. It just turned 12.05. Let's see what the notification cool off, notification and recording cool off of this is Arlo Essential. 2K camera. Not bad. Motion detected first, as you can see. Then it will go to person detected. It changes whenever it sees that uh, it's a person. All right, so just to compare the notification speed, I turned off all motion on the smart detection and uh, I just have the AI person detection turned on. And let's see what the notification speed of the Arlo Essential 2K camera. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be a little bit delayed now. Man, that's longer than I thought. So it directly goes to person detection just like that and there's no motion usually if you set all motion then you'll get the all motion uh, notification first we are going to test the maximum detection distance of the arlo essential 2k camera and i've set the sensitivity to the highest and let's check it out at 40 feet it uses a pir sensor so we'll see not at 40 feet Let's go 35. There you go. Cool. Motion detected. And there you go. Person detected. And it saw me at 35 feet.
Now we are going to see how soon the Arlo Essential 2K camera is going to start recording when motion is going towards it. There you go. Let me see on this one. Let's see how soon it detected me. Huh, a little bit close. This is the audio quality coming out from the Arlo Essential 2K camera, second generation. This is the audio quality coming out from the Arlo Essential 2K camera, second generation. So what do you think? Video quality is mediocre. And performance-wise, this Arlo Essential camera performed decently, just a bit delayed in the notification. As to motion detection, which I've been noticing, and I noticed this first with the Blink Wired Floodlight camera, and also the new Blink Outdoor 4, is that their regular motion detection, I now don't get false notifications, even when the sensitivity is set to the highest compared to their older models. I know with the Blink 4, it affects its detection range, but it doesn't with this Arlo. It is consistently detecting me at 35 feet. One good thing about this camera is the price. Finally, Arlo realized to keep its doors open, they have to lower their pricing or offer more affordable cameras. I'm not sure if this is enough though, because I'm seeing a lot of complaints that started a while back when they got rid of their free cloud recording, and recently when they added an end-of-life clause on their products. Now, this is not just Arlo though, and I know Ring added one also after Arlo. This is the thing about internet or server-dependent cameras though. The cameras that you already bought and own becomes a paperweight when the company decides to or shuts down. I think that's a good topic for another video. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.